this one-hour webinar on the fifth edition of the Work Sampling System. In terms of the agenda for this afternoon, I'm going to give you an overview of the fifth edition of the Work Sampling System. I'm going to describe the components of the Work Sampling System, the fifth edition, and I'll describe the assessment cycle. Toward the end of the webinar, I will show a short video clip. I know some of you are listening to the audio on the telephone. The audio for that video clip will broadcast through your computer speakers. So if you don't have computer speakers, you won't be able to hear the audio. It's only about three minutes long. You could still get some information from the visual part of the video, but if you have computer speakers, if you'd be sure to turn that to turn those up, to turn up the volume when we get to that section. Before I get started with an overview of the fifth edition of the work sampling system, I'd like to get a sense as to who we have with us today. If you would let me know by responding to this statement, I currently use either work sampling in paper form, maybe work sampling online, maybe you use work sampling both in paper and online, or maybe you do not use work sampling at all. If you would let me know by selecting your response, and then clicking the Submit button, get a sense as to your experience and your background knowledge with respect to the work sampling system. Seems like a number of you are familiar with work sampling, whether you use it in paper form or online, and then several of you have not yet used the work sampling system. So thank you so much for your response. This is designed to be an overview webinar, so if you are already familiar with the work sampling system, certainly I hope that the way I describe certain concepts might increase your knowledge or add to your knowledge base, your existing knowledge base. So to get us started then, I want to briefly describe the work sampling system, and I want us to think a little bit about what work sampling is and what the work sampling system was designed to do. If you think about work sampling, there are probably four different concepts that are associated with the work sampling system. We certainly think about the work sampling system as an authentic performance assessment and I'll describe each of these in more detail. It's also curriculum embedded. It's an instructional assessment that is used on an ongoing basis. Let me start by saying a few words about the work sampling system as an authentic performance assessment. If you think about the term authentic, you're thinking about something that is real. So the work sampling system is designed to help you assess the child's real performance, the child's actual performance, and we're using actual classroom experiences, activities, and products. So we're looking at the child's day-to-day -day environment, what the child does in that day-to-day -day environment, and we're collecting all of that, those actual experiences, the child's actual products, and we're using those as documentation, and later on we will evaluate the documentation to describe children's skills, knowledge, and behaviors. If you think about any kind of assessment, whether I'm giving, giving you a paper and pencil test, for example, or maybe it's a multiple choice test that you're taking online, there are always two parts to assessment. There is some kind of documentation, and you will then evaluate or analyze that documentation to make a decision about the child's acquisition of the information that you were teaching about the child's learning. So the work sampling system will be based on real classroom experiences, 
that will serve as your, well, you will document actual classroom experiences, and then you will evaluate your documentation to determine whether or not children are mastering the grade level objectives. If you think about the work sampling system, not only as a performance-based assessment, but also as a curriculum embedded assessment, we're looking at the work sampling system as being able to help you describe what your children know and what your children can do with respect to the activities that are ongoing in your classroom. So again, you're thinking about those actual classroom experiences and what those classroom experiences children's activities, children's products, what those products will tell you about what a child knows and is able to do. So if you think about your classroom, for example, children might be solving problems, they might be writing in journals or interacting with their peers, they might be in the math center using blocks to construct designs, they might be using finger paints, maybe doing experiments, Whatever those actual classroom activities are, those are the activities that will provide you with the information that will tell you what the children know and what they can do. So when we talk about the work sampling system as curriculum embedded, really the assessment is embedded in whatever curriculum you are using in your classroom. In addition to being focused on the actual curriculum that you're using, the work sampling system is designed as an instructional assessment. It's designed to tell you whether or not the instruction is having the desired outcome, which is te theoretically that children will learn whatever concepts and skills you're teaching. So the primary focus of the work sampling system, the primary focus really of any assessment is on helping us to make decisions in our classroom. Do we need to modify the instruction? Do we need to reteach a specific concept? So assessment really tells us whether or not children have mastered um, specific concepts and therefore we can move on to the concept that comes next in the hierarchy or whether we need to refocus on reteaching a concept, maybe using different strategies. If you think about, about the work sampling system as an assessment, we really look at this as a means of monitoring progress. If you think about young children, we're concerned about whether or not they're making progress in terms of personal and social and emotional areas, those learning behaviors that are foundational to mastering academic skills. We also look at physical development and we look at the development of academic skills. So the, the assessment that you're going to be conducting using the work sampling system will allow you to monitor children's progress in a number of specific domains. So I talked about assessment as focused on certainly using some form of documentation and then evaluating the documentation in order to determine whether or not children are learning if they're mastering specific skills. In essence, in, in order to be able to describe what children know and are able to do. The documentation for the work sampling system comes from teachers' observations. So when children are engaged in activities in the classroom, you as the classroom teacher will be observing the interactions. You will be looking at their work products. You're observing them as they're actively working, as they are creating products in their everyday classroom, and your documentation of your observations, maybe the products that the child has created, those will form the documentation that you will later evaluate to determine what children know and are able to do. And the purpose of collecting the documentation is so that we can 
so that you, the teacher, can receive feedback about children's learning, so that you can provide feedback to students as well as their families, as well as to other educators and professionals. So think about how the work sampling system actually informs the instructional process, that teaching learning process. And then finally, I mentioned that the work sampling system is designed to be used in an ongoing way in your classroom. So you will use the work sampling system to repeatedly assess a student's work. And you will use several components of the work sampling system as part of your repeated assessment of students' work. I'm going to talk about the developmental guidelines and developmental checklists that are part of the work sampling system, and I'll talk about your observations as well as work samples and uh, as well as children's work samples and how you use all of these pieces of information in an ongoing way to identify patterns of student learning. So think about the work sampling system certainly as focused on the child's performance in his or her day-to-day -day environment and looking at how you will observe the child's actual products, the child's interactions with materials, with peers, with you, the teacher, and how that information will help you to determine whether or not the child's development is age appropriate or grade appropriate, and I'll just say more generically, developmentally appropriate. So if you think about the work sampling system, work sampling includes two primary, um, two broad parts, if you will. First, there is the work sampling system that is used for children starting at age three years and then going up through grade three. There is also a work sampling um, that is specifically for Head Start programs, and those components are focused on three-year-olds and four-year-olds. Both the work sampling system for preschool age three through grade three, as well as work sampling for Head Start are available in both paper and online, as we call this work sampling online. So I want to look at the components of the work sampling system, and the components of the work sampling system will be the same. Um, well, the components are going to be the same. I'll show you some differences between the work sampling system and the work sampling for Head Start. There are some slight differences, but the actual components are going to be the same. The components of the fifth edition of the work sampling system includes two broad um, pieces, developmental guidelines and developmental checklists, as well as the summary reports. Now, if you're familiar with the fourth edition of the work sampling system, you'll know that in addition to the developmental guidelines and the developmental checklists and the summary reports, there was also a portfolio, a portfolio component. When the authors revised the fourth edition of the work sampling system, they wanted to update the guidelines and checklists to make sure that those aligned with current research and standards. However, the fifth edition of the work sampling system is based on a process of collecting evidence of all types. So you're thinking not only of teacher observations, you're thinking also of work samples, maybe photographic evidence, maybe videos. So because the fifth edition of the work sampling system includes evidence of all types, we're no longer formally using the portfolio that was part of the fourth edition. Now, that doesn't mean that if you, were, if you were using the fourth edition and you were collecting evidence as part of the portfolio, you can still continue to do that. However, that is now integrated with the, the fifth edition under developmental guidelines and checklists 
all of the evidence that you would use to evaluate the child's performance of a specific skill. So I'm going to say a few more words about developmental guidelines and checklists, but if you think about both guidelines and checklists, we are focused on the child's performance of specific skills. And those skills are captured in seven domains for the work sampling system, preschool age three through grade three, and in 11 domains for work sampling for Head Start. I'll list those domains here in a minute. What you'll do is collect evidence on an ongoing basis and then evaluate all of your evidence to formally rate the child's performance of specific skills three times per year, in the fall, in the winter, and in the spring. And your evidence will be teacher observations, work samples, other sources of information. I mentioned photographs, maybe videos. So product, the child's actual work products are included as part of your evidence. And then all of that information will be summarized in a summary report. And I'll describe that summary report here in a few minutes. So there are seven domains on the work sampling system, preschool age three up through grade three. And those seven domains are listed here, beginning with domain one, personal and social development. Notice that domains include language and literacy, including language and literacy for English language learners, also include math, science, and social studies, as well as the arts, physical development, health, and safety. Now, for the most part, the ordering of these domains, these numbers, really are not sequential necessarily. The only domain that actually provides the foundation for most of these content areas is the personal and social development domain. You think about personal and social development as capturing all of those learning behaviors, the ability to sit quietly, to listen attentively, to begin a task and then um, see it through to its completion, approaches to learning, if you will, um, self-concept, feeling that you're, you're confident that you can perform a task, your interrelationships or your interactions with others. So personal social development actually forms the foundation for learning language, for learning math, and for learning to think about math and science. Um, but apart from that, the order in which these, these domains, the, the numbers, really don't tell you that I learn language before I learn math, for example. Now, I mentioned that Head Start, for Head Start, there are 11 domains, and notice the 11th domain is English language development. We capture all of the domains that, that we capture for the work sampling system. Notice physical development and health, social and emotional development. Social and emotional development, um, there's a separate section for approaches to learning. Um, logic and reasoning has to do more with that cognitive, the thinking and reasoning piece. Notice there are separate domains for language and literacy. Language and literacy is one domain in that seven domain um, section for the work sampling system. Then math and science, and then creative arts, social studies. So for the most part, we're still covering the arts, physical development and health, certainly social and emotional development, including approaches to learning, as well as the cognitive, the language, the math, the science, and the social studies. But 11 domains for Head Start. So let me say a few things about how the domains actually help us to look at specific skills. So when you look at the broad domains, for example, domain two in the work sampling system is language and literacy, and each domain consists of a number of functional components. So a domain is a broad area of learning that has a number of subdomains, which we call in the work sampling system functional components. And then each functional component is going to be made up of specific skills, 
which we call performance indicators. So language and literacy, for example, um, will consist of four functional components, language, listening, and speaking, and then literacy, reading, and writing. So for each of these functional components, there are a number of performance indicators. There are a number of skills that will tell you whether or not the child's development in this particular domain is appropriate given his or her age or given his or her grade level. So what are the developmental expectations for a child of a certain age with respect to comprehension, gaining meaning by listening? What about being able to follow directions that involve a series of actions? And then for speaking, does the child speak clearly? Does the child convey ideas effectively? Does the child use rules for conversation and discussion? You're thinking about expressive language. The second one here may be the pragmatics of language. And then for reading, does the child show understanding of concepts of print? And what are some activities in your classroom that would lead you to say, yes, this child shows some understanding of concepts of print? What about phonological awareness? Again, what are some activities that would lead you to conclude that the child is demonstrating phonological awareness? And perhaps more importantly, if you're working with children in kindergarten, what would you expect a child in kindergarten to be able to do with respect to phonological awareness? And the same thing for writing. So for each functional component, you'll have a number of specific performance indicators and these indicators are really, if you think about it conceptually, these are the skills that you teach in your classroom. You're teaching a child to use letter-like shapes and maybe letters and words to convey meaning. And then you will see if the child is, in fact, learning that skill, and you will use your observations and the child's work samples in order to determine whether or not the child is able to perform that skill. Now, the same concept for the Head Start um, domains, except the one difference is instead of functional components, we refer to those subdomains as domain elements. But you'll still have a broad domain, and you'll still have performance indicators. So on this one, and this one, and yes, this webinar is an overview of work sampling. So if you are um, a seasoned user of the work sampling system, certainly there might be some things in here that might be informative for you, but this webinar is designed to be an overview. Okay, so when you think about Head Start, again, you're thinking about the broad domain, and the broad domain in this case is language development. And if you think about the elements, certainly you're thinking about receptive and expressive language. And then what are some of the skills that you might teach and assess that would tell you that the child's ability to understand language is developmentally appropriate? Maybe for a child age four, the child is able to follow two or three step directions down here under expressive language is using expanded vocabulary and language for a variety of purposes. So again, think about your broad domain, those sub areas, and then the performance indicators that give you a sense as to what skills you'd be teaching and assessing. Okay. So I mentioned the work sampling system includes a number of domains. If you would respond to this question, the work sampling system includes how many domains, and just list your answer and then click Submit. All right, thank you so much. As you're responding to that, and the answer, of course, is, is either seven 
or 11, 7 for the work sampling system, preschool age 3 through grade 3, and then 11 for the work sampling system for Head Start. There was a question about um, parents who don't speak or read English and whether or not it's possible to convert the information um, to Spanish, and the answer is yes. Um, if you're using the online system, you can generate the information in Spanish. Okay. All right. So let me say a few words about the developmental guidelines and the developmental checklist. For the work sampling system, those broad domains, the subdomains, whether they're called functional components or domain elements, as well as the performance indicators are captured on the developmental guidelines and the developmental checklist. I want to start by saying a few words about the developmental guidelines. So you will have a separate developmental guideline for each of the age levels. So whether you're thinking about a three-year-old or a four-year-old or you're thinking about a child in kindergarten, first grade, second or third grade, so the developmental guidelines will tell you about what children of a certain age or in a certain grade will be expected to learn each year in each of the domains. So the performance indicators will tell you what those specific skills are that children will be expected to master by the end of the year. Each performance indicator will include a rationale which will tell you what the developmental expectations are for a child of a certain age or in a certain grade. Each indicator will also include some examples that will give you ideas about where you might see that in your classroom. So I want to say a few things about the rationale that will explain the meaning and significance of the indicator and that will outline the reasonable expectations for a child of a certain age or in a certain grade. So let's say you were looking at the developmental guidelines for the Head Start work sampling. And I'm looking at three-year-olds. And I'm looking, for example, at Domain 5, Language Development, Domain Element B, and Performance Indicator 2. Sometimes you might see this expressed as VB2. So you're thinking about the fifth domain, the second functional component, and then the second performance indicator. So what are your, your reasonable expectations for a child who is three, year old, three years old with respect to following rules for conversation. Well, they understand that they're expected to respond when someone speaks to them. They are able to take turns when talking. They may need some support. You may also notice that they may interrupt a teacher or another child if they are excited about a topic. They are beginning to acquire other rules of social language. For example, they may stray from one topic to another. They're learning to stay on topic. So the rationale will tell you what you can reasonably expect of a child of a certain age with respect to a specific performance indicator. The examples will give you some ideas about ways that students might demonstrate that skill. When you think about the developmental guidelines, you are thinking about what's considered to be developmentally appropriate. You're thinking about specific criterion referenced developmental expectations. So what you'll be doing is comparing a student's work to specific criteria as opposed to comparing this child's performance to that of maybe same age peers. So you're thinking about developmental expectations. When you think about the examples that are included in the developmental guidelines, these are things that you might see in your classroom that would tell you that this observation provides information about this specific indicator. So maybe, in demonstrating that he or she is able to follow rules for conversation, the child may make up dialogue for a role play, may acknowledge somebody's verbal message by saying, 
yeah or okay, might change the topic, might use a quiet voice when talking to a baby. So think about the behaviors that children might exhibit that might give you information about their ability to follow rules for conversation. Now, the developmental guidelines will capture reasonable expectations and will provide examples. The developmental checklist is what you will use to evaluate the child's performance three times per year, fall, winter, and spring. So you'll have the same domains, the same domain elements, and the same performance indicators that are included in the developmental guidelines, and you will take all of your evidence, evaluate your evidence, to determine if the child is gaining meaning by listening. Maybe in the fall, the, child's, the child is not yet gaining meaning by listening. Maybe in the winter, that is in process. Maybe in the spring, the child's performance is proficient. So your ratings are not yet in, pro in process or proficient. And you'll do that for all of your performance indicators within the associated domains. This is the kindergarten developmental checklist for, um, for mathematical thinking. And again, think about a specific indicator, for example, reasoning quantitatively, beginning to use tools. What are your reasonable expectations for a child in kindergarten? Those are described in the developmental guidelines. And what are some examples of activities or behaviors that children might exhibit that would lead you to draw conclusions about the child's performance of that particular skill? So let's say, for example, you're thinking that you want to know if the children are able to reason quantitative, quantitatively. First thing you're going to think about is, well, what do I expect children in my kindergarten classroom to be able to do with respect to that indicator? With experience and support, they should be able to reason quantitatively with numbers to 10. You might notice that they're grouping unifix cubes in sets of 10. They're counting how many quickly. They're using their fingers maybe to add two and two if you give them a word problem. So again, you're thinking about what are your reasonable expectations and then what are some behaviors that you might observe that would lead you to link the behavioral observation to this specific indicator. <coughs> Excuse me. In addition to the developmental guidelines and checklists, you will, once you've completed your developmental checklist, at the end of each of those three reporting periods, fall, winter, and spring, you will complete a summary report, just like you typically complete a report card every nine weeks or 11 weeks. The summary report is a form that you will complete to share information with families and administrators <clears throat> excuse me, not only about the child's performance, which I'll show you what those ratings are here in a minute, but also about the child's progress. Maybe the child's performance is not yet at the level of proficiency, but, <clears throat> excuse me, the child has made significant progress from maybe the fall rating period to the winter. So there will be <clears throat> ratings for both performance and progress, there will also be a space for teacher and family comments. <clears throat> this one is available in Spanish as well. I'll give you just a second to look at this summary report while I take a drink of water here. <clears throat> So this is the ratings that you will use for each child's summary report. And notice you will evaluate performance as well as progress, and you will check the box for each of the domains. Either the child's performance in that domain is as expected, or maybe the child's performance needs, or maybe the child needs development in that area. Notice your ratings for progress are either as expected or other than expected. I think as expected for performance 
tells you that the child's current performance either meets or exceeds expectations for the child's age or grade. So when you look at the developmental guidelines, the child's performance meets or exceeds those expectations. Needs development for performance, the child's current performance does not meet expectations. As expected under progress has to do with growth. So you're comparing the child's performance at time two to the child's performance at time one. Now the rating of other than expected for progress tells you either that the child's growth is either below or above expectations for this child. So your comments will tell us whether or not the other than expected rating is good, the child's, the child's progress is above expectations, or maybe below expectations. Now, <clears throat> the new work sampling system, the fifth edition, is conceptualized as an assessment cycle that repeats throughout the year and repeats from day to day. The assessment cycle starts out with you asking questions. What is it exactly that you want to know about your children's ability to reason quantitatively, for example? What is it that you want to know about your, child's, your children's ability to use symbols, letter symbols, to communicate? So think about the questions that you're going to ask. And those questions typically come from the performance indicators. Once you know what it is that you want to know, what questions you want to answer, you collect evidence that will allow you to answer those questions. You interpret the evidence, and then based on the evidence, you take action. So I want to say a few words about each of these components, starting with asking questions. So, for example... If you are a kindergarten teacher and you have 24 students in your classroom, maybe you want to know what your 24 students know about number, what do they know about quantity, what do they know about problem solving. So you'll go to um, the developmental guidelines and the developmental checklist and you'll identify the performance indicators that will give you the answers to the, to the questions that you posed. So maybe one of the performance indicators might be, um, is the child making sense of problems? Is the child using simple strategies to solve problems? Is the child counting with understanding? Does the child show understanding of number and quantity? Does the child seem to understand relationships between quantities? And is the child beginning to estimate quantity? Now, you would go to your developmental checklist and maybe identify all of the performance indicators. Here, for example, maybe under mathematical thinking, domain, functional component A, processes and practices, um, performance indicator 1, making sense of problems using symbol strategies to solve them. Then under functional component B, counting with understanding, showing understanding of number and quantity, beginning to estimate quantity. Maybe those are the indicators on which you want to focus. Then what you'll do is you'll design activities um, in your classroom, maybe over in the math center, for example. You'll put a number of blocks to see if children are going to um, use those blocks to make designs, or are they going to be matching? Maybe they construct um, several towers. Each tower has the same number of blocks. So again, you'll think about activities in your classroom that you can construct that will allow you to observe children's performance of these specific skills. And based on the activities, you'll then collect evidence. And your evidence will include certainly, as I mentioned, um, documented observations, everything that you see and hear, you record the factual information. You also collect work samples, any um, videos or photographic evidence that would capture um, the information related to these indicators. 
So here, for example, is an example of an observation of a child in kindergarten with respect to those indicators. So the teacher wrote um, pretty much some notes based on Max's work in the math center, and notice that she took a picture of the work that, he, that Max did, and she also wrote some notes about their interaction. So Max built this structure here with four sides. He had eight unit blocks on, on each side. So if the teacher goes up, she talks to Max, and she says, you know, I noticed that you have used the same size blocks on both sides of your structure. And he says, yeah, I wanted them to match. And then she says, well, what did you do to make sure that they matched? And then he responded, I counted the blocks. I have eight on this side, and then I did eight here, and eight here, and then eight here. And then the teacher says, um, so you used eight unit blocks on each side, and by matching the blocks and, and counting, you got the four sides to be the same. And then she writes down some notes about their conversation, and she says, is there anything else I should write about your building? And then he tells her, well, me and Eric didn't agree about how tall to make it, but then he agreed with me. And then she says, um, well, I wonder what you're going to do next. Do you want to make the building taller, maybe add a roof or, or extend it in another way? And then she waits a moment while he looks at the building, and then she walks away, and then she comes back, and this is what he's constructed. So again, this is one observation of one child. You will use this observation in conjunction with other pieces of information in order to draw conclusions about Max's performance of these particular indicators. Did you notice that he was counting with understanding? Did he show understanding of number and quantity? Was he beginning to estimate quantities? Again, think about your observations and what the observation will tell you about specific performance indicators. And then what you'll do, um, once you've collected evidence, you will interpret the evidence. And you interpret evidence routinely. You interpret evidence while you're interacting with a child, like the way that this teacher was interacting with Max. She was asking him questions, and the questions that she was asking really reflected her interpretation. Or you interpret your evidence maybe on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. So you interpret your evidence at different points along that assessment cycle. So when you think about the assessment cycle, it really is ongoing asking questions, collecting evidence, interpreting evidence, and then taking action. Sometimes you take action right in the moment as you're interacting with a child, or you might take action later on. Okay. Now, I mentioned, I showed you the developmental checklist. When you look at the developmental checklist, I showed you three ratings, not yet, in process, and proficient. And again, um, these ratings, not yet, the child may be attempting to perform the skill, but can't yet demonstrate the skill. The evidence might show that the child's skills in the area are emerging, or proficient would indicate that the child reliably performs a specific skill. Now, for the online system, if you use the work sampling system online, there are two additional ratings, did not observe or not applicable. If you use the work sampling system, the paper version only, these are the three ratings with which you're familiar. And then the final phase would be taking action. And again, the action that you take depends on your conclusion. Um, the action that you take may be um, you taking action on the spot, such as when the teacher was interacting with Max, or you take action maybe at the end of the week to determine that you need to reteach specific concepts to the whole group. And then finally, you take action when you are rating the child's performance 
both on the developmental checklist, fall, winter, and spring, as well as on the summary report. Now, one thing I want to say about the summary report is when you're thinking about the summary report, there will be a section for you to assign a rating for performance, either as expected or needs development. Also, a section for you to rate the child's progress, either as expected or other than expected. One of the sections on the summary report is for comments. And comments are really important because the comments help us to understand the ratings. So here, for example, for this particular domain related to language, um, the teacher said that this child's rating is needs development. Progress is other than expected. But in order for us to understand, these comments are instructive. So this child, for example, was unable to communicate with children or adults at the beginning of the year. Now she is regularly communicating. She uses facial expressions, she uses gestures, and she uses single words. She understands a great deal more than she can currently express. So her progress in this area has been exceptional. So this rating under progress of other than expected actually indicates that her progress is above the expected level, her progress, she made progress at a rate beyond what you would reasonably expect. So again, comments really provide a lot of information about, about um, the ratings that you assign. Okay, so just to pull all of this together for us, I want us to observe a teacher in interaction with several children and I want us to focus on one child, Dahlia. As you're looking at this three-minute video clip, um, I want you to be thinking about several performance indicators. And these performance indicators are from domain three, mathematical thinking. I want us to think about making sense of problems using simple strategies to solve them, I also want you to be thinking about counting with understanding, showing understanding of number and quantity, and beginning to estimate quantity. But one, one of the things I want you to focus on, in addition to looking at these specific indicators, is whether or not you observe any behaviors that may be related to other domains on the work sampling system. I think the reality is that even when you are focused, for example, in this case, on the mathematical thinking domain, because performance requires a number of interrelated domains, you might be able, based on one observation, to link that observation not only to performance indicators in the domain of interest, such as in this case mathematics, but you might be able to link that observation to other domains as well. So I want us to look at Dahlia, and there are three children who are going to be working with this teacher, and I want you to focus on this little girl right here, um, who that's Dahlia. Okay, so let me get this ready for us to go, and it will take me just one second to navigate to this video clip. Great question. One, hmm. two, three. Can I write down the cars? I think here? that's a great idea, Delia. Oh. Let's investigate. That means let's look a little further. This is fun. Can we count this how many that. windows? The thing? One, two, three, three four. four. Let's, let's find go. out how many windows we have. One, One two, two, three, four. Eight. eight! Okay. Eight windows on the car. There are eight windows on this car. I made eight windows. 
I can see that you've I drawn like eight windows, Celia. I would like you to walk around this car with me. I would like you to count how many tires there are. Ooh, that's awesome. I, and I would like you to right count here. how many right. mirrors right. there are on the car, all right? One. All right, you wrote the number four. And Jordan has found two mirrors. Lyric has found four door handles. And Delia has found four tires. So Delia's told me that we have four tires and eight windows. Is there anything else that I can write down to tell your mom about what we've done today? Well, my friends and I did a, did a great job. I know there are many windows, but not many, many windows, and drawing with me. Thank you so much for helping me investigate. You're welcome. Are you ready to go inside now? Yeah. All right, let's go. Now I have a new question for you. If one car has four tires and two cars have eight tires, how many tires do you think three cars have? Let's see. Twelve. Do you know what plus means? Plus means to see what does something like equal. That's right. Does Al look like this? It does. It does. It looks like a little T. Like this. That's right. Just, just let me do the equal. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me look like an equal. What's the total number of tires, Delia? One, One. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I know you can write the number 16, Delia. Let's write the word tires. I, I, I hear you sounding it out. I'm going to write down that you can write a number sentence and the number 16. Okay. It seemed like some of you weren't able to um, hear that video. Not sure if that was related to to my system or or yours. I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> but those of you who were able to see it um, and to hear it, which of the math performance indicators did you observe? Remember, you were looking at number and quantity. Making sense of problems, counting with understanding, showing understanding, beginning to estimate quantity. From this video clip, and this is only one observation, would you link that observation to any of these indicators here? Okay. Now, I noticed there are a number of questions um, in the chat box about the summary report. So the developmental checklist is completed three times per year, fall, winter, and spring. The summary report is completed three times per year based on the developmental checklist. So fall, winter, and spring, the summary report really conceptually is like the report card. 
So every nine weeks, we send home a report card. The summary report in a number of programs takes the place of the report card. So whether you're doing it every nine weeks or every 11 weeks, that is when you would complete the summary report. So these are the teacher's observations. Um, she took a few notes. And remember, she also has those work samples where Dalia wrote the word tires, where she drew the number of tires. So she'll not only have work samples, she'll also have the notes that she captured. Now, this teacher decided that this observation would be linked to a number of performance indicators, two performance indicators in domain three, which is the math domain, but notice she also linked this observation and her interaction with Dalia to one performance indicator in language and literacy and two performance indicators in the, social, in the personal social domain. So let's see what this teacher thought that she captured based on her interaction with Dalia. She felt that based on that interaction, that Dalia demonstrated self-confidence, that she showed initiative and self-direction. Now, she is not necessarily going to use this observation alone to assign a rating. She will use this observation in conjunction with other pieces of information in order to, to determine whether or not um, Dalia's ability to demonstrate self-confidence is proficient based on expectations for kindergarten age children, but certainly she was able to document based on that one observation that she showed initiative. Also, she's beginning to use phonics and word analysis skills to decode. She tried to write the word tires, for example. And then when you look at the math domain, she showed understanding of number and quantity. She's beginning to understand relationships between quantities. For example, if one car has four tires, how many, how many tires does, do, do four cars have? So again, she's showing the understanding of relationship and she was able to apply addition and subtraction to problems. So what I wanted you to see from this example is that even though you might decide to focus on indicators in one domain, the reason that I know that you're able to show understanding of number and quantity is more than likely because you write down something for me, which probably might also be linked to fine motor, um, fine motor skills under physical development and health, or you're going to tell me something which will take me to the language and literacy domain. So you always want to think about the interrelated nature of these domains and how performance of a, an indicator in one domain requires um, skills from other domains. Now, I want to wrap this up by showing you um, the work sampling online. All of the pieces that I showed you before, like the developmental checklist, for example, those pictures I showed you from the developmental checklist or from the paper version, the online system is a little different. And one of you had a question about whether or not, you're, if you're struggling with the online system, please call our customer support number, um, or if you can't get in touch with them, send me an email and I'll put you in touch with the right people at customer support. Um, we also have a number of, of um, help files that are within the system itself. But send me a message and I'll put you in touch with um, somebody who can help you if I can't answer the question for you. If you use the work sampling system online, this will be your sign-in page, and your, the work sampling system online pretty much will do everything that you can do in paper and pencil. For example, for a specific class, you can enter your evidence, enter your observations, instead of writing down the observation on a piece of paper, or maybe in addition to, because sometimes when I'm in the middle of teaching, I just take out a sticky note and write down some notes, and then later on I go to my online system, enter the observations. Then I can link the observations to specific performance indicators. I can create um, my checklist. 
as I'm creating my checklist, I can pull up the developmental guidelines that are associated with that particular performance indicator for a child of that age in that grade. And then, of course, over here, you can generate your summary report. And then down here at the bottom, number of professional development resources for you and the developmental guidelines are here. You can print them out from here. And then this is the enter evidence page. Essentially, you're going to choose your rating period, either period one, two, or three, fall, winter, or spring. What is the title of your observation? And then just write down your observation notes. Then you can click right here to link to performance indicators, and you can add any attachments. If you have work samples or you've taken a picture, for example, you can add that as an attachment. And then you link the observation for specific children, these two children with a check mark in green, to specific performance indicators. For example, here, let's say I want to link to language and literacy. I could go over here, look at listening, just click on the word guidelines, and I would see exactly what you'd expect for a child in this grade to be able to do with respect to gaining meaning by listening. So I think to summarize, um, during each collection period, fall, winter, and spring, you're going to plan, you observe, you record, you collect your evidence, you review your checklist periodically, you make pencil ratings, you talk with students about your observations, about expectations, and then you use the information that you gather to inform your instruction to plan daily and weekly. And then near the end of each collection period, fall, winter, and spring, you review your ratings, make final ratings, and then identify any examples that you want to add to your summary report. So here is your timeline, and this is your, your cycle, if you will. You're going to have this repeating cycle that starts in week one with data collection, asking questions, collecting evidence. By week four, you're going to review and rate, review your evidence, assign a preliminary rating. Week seven, again, review, assign a preliminary rating. And then by week nine, that's when you're finalizing your information. And then your summary report, which is like the report card, you're completing when that reporting period ends. And then you come back for the second reporting period, and that cycle starts anew. I think I answered most of the questions that were here. Is one, only one person typically responsible for using this instrument in a classroom? This really has to do with what children are doing in the classroom. Um, if I have an, an assistant who works with me in the classroom, you want to structure your data collection that same way. The work sampling system is really designed to be integrated with what you are doing in the regular classroom. Another question was, how do you enter your class list in the online system? Um, Samantha, I can send you some information on that. Um, certainly, you would add, you would add children, um, and I can send you some instructions on how to do that. The deadlines for each cycle for this year, I think that really, what are the deadlines for each cycle? It really depends on your program. We, we make recommendations fall, winter, and spring, and it typically mirrors your typical report card cycle. So if you start in the fall at the end of your first nine-week period when you'd send home a report card, those are the typical cycles that programs would use. So if you're starting now, when does your, your winter reporting period begin and end? Those are the dates that you want to keep in mind. And then are there child outcomes reports that administrators can use? The answer is yes. We were looking at the teacher um, part of the work sampling system. There is a separate part for the administrator. And yes, there are child outcomes reports. And um, Lisa, if you have specific questions about that, we do have uh, a, an overview of the administrator's interface. 
um, that is very detailed. I can send you the link to that one so you could take a look at that and we describe the outcomes reports as well as other reports that are available. Okay. All right. So if there are any other questions that I missed, I will respond to those um, based on the email address that you provided when you registered. If you have any other specific questions, please send them to me. My email address is here. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.